Hey, what's up folks? This is Keith and you're watching Barbara's Auto Help. This is part two of a series on the 3.6 liter Chrysler Pentastar teardown. And in this video, we're going to be getting into the cylinder head. We're going to be talking about the components that go on the cylinder head and the components that are in the cylinder head and how they work and of course how the cylinder head works. So let's go ahead and get into it. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to be concerning ourselves with the right side cylinder head. The same thing goes for the left side there. So all of this that I'm going to show you here applies to the other side there. Okay, so as you know, this is a dual overhead cam engine. So it has two cams per cylinder head an intake cam and an exhaust cam. So the purposes of the intake cam and the exhaust cam, of course, is to help introduce air into the combustion chamber and then, of course, expel the exhaust byproduct after the combustion process has taken place. And of course, the way it does that is these camshafts rotate in sync with the crankshaft. As you know from the last video, our camshafts are timing chain driven from the crankshaft. For each two revolutions of the crankshaft, you'll get one revolution of each of these camshafts here. So whenever the camshaft rotates, and I'm gonna manually rotate it, these lobes rotate along with the camshaft, of course, because it's made onto the camshaft. But whenever the high part of that camshaft comes into contact with the rocker or the cam follower, it will then push down the intake valve when you're dealing with the intake cam here, and it will open that intake valve and it will allow fresh air and fuel to be introduced into the combustion chamber like so. See how that just kind of pushes it down right there. So the same thing happens over here on the exhaust cam too. Whenever it's rotated, those cam lobes of course rotate with the camshaft. And whenever the high part of that cam lobe comes into contact with the cam follower or rocker arm, it pushes down the valve and opens the exhaust valve. And that allows the exhaust gas to escape the combustion chamber. Now another interesting fact about this engine here is that it has variable valve timing. And that goes for the intake cam and the exhaust cam on both heads there. And you can see these units here. These are your variable valve timing units or cam phasers, depending upon what terminology you want to use there. But the way that these are controlled is through your variable valve timing solenoids, which actually bolt onto the front of the valve covers. I was actually missing those components on this engine here. But it's basically just a solenoid that pushes in on these little spool valves here on the cam phasers and these spools in turn direct which way the oil flows within this unit here either advancing or retarding the rotation of the camshaft in relation to the crankshaft thus achieving variable valve timing. And we're going to take these apart here in just a second and look at the innards and get a little bit better understanding of how these things work on the inside. All right, let's go ahead and take these uh, phaser units off. Okay, so this is the intake phaser or VVT unit and you can see this bolt here is not actually a bolt. It's more like a, uh, a spool valve if you will. You see it's got these many holes in the side of it right here and that fits up into the unit there. But whenever you push in on this part of it, which is what your actuator would do, that valve in there opens and closes different passages along this bolt here, which of course allows oil, which comes, comes in through there, to be directed into different passages of the unit here. You can see inside the unit, you have corresponding holes in there. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. There's one uh, all along the back side here and also on the front side there. It has corresponding holes too. And that just directs the oil different directions of that unit and causes it to advance or retard the, the camshaft there. And I believe that they, in the parts catalog, this may even be called an actuator too, uh, but the electric solenoid is actually the thing that physically moves that spool valve in and out and what controls it there. So let's go ahead and take this apart and take a look on the inside. I 
Now you can see inside there, you have that uh, assembly inside the assembly there. And you can imagine that oil could be directed to either side of that vein there. And that is what advances and retards the cam timing. And that's how that works there. And you can actually take this apart even further. And on this part right here, you can see that you have a port right there and a port right there. And oil will be direct and directed into either one of those ports there, pushing this way or pushing that way. And that's basically it. It's actually pretty simple when you actually take it apart and uh, look at it like this. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and remove our camshafts here. Go ahead and remove our intake cam. And by the way, you can see that hole right there. It has a corresponding uh, channel right here with a hole down there. That's how oil is actually delivered to that uh, VVT unit through that right there. So just FYI, remove our exhaust cam. All right, now these right here are what's called your cam followers or rocker arms, if you will. And this is actually a pretty common point of failure for this engine here. And I'll have a video posted down in the description beneath this video where I went into that and I actually explained how these actually fail. But uh, these are your rockers or cam followers. And then in here you have your tappets. And these are little hydraulic tappets or valve lash adjusters. And you can see you got a hole right there and that little piston inside there and it's spring loaded and oil goes inside there and actually pushes this tappet up just a little bit to take up any slack between it and the cam follower. And you probably noticed that each one of these valves has its own cam follower or rocker arm and tappet. Let's go ahead and take all these out. I'm sure that you've noticed these little recesses right here that the hydraulic valve lash adjusters sit into or tappets, whichever term you want to use to name that part there. Well, those recesses are linked to these little channels right here and these are bored out on the inside and that's where high pressure oil goes through and goes to each one of those tappets. Of course, the tappets in turn gets filled with that pressurized oil to take up any slack between it and the cam follower. And of course, that gallery goes up here to where the, the front of the cams connect to the head there and that pressurized oil gets into the cam that way too and of course your cam caps are lubricated by these holes here uh, that run off of those oil galleries also. Alright now we got most of that stuff out of the way we can go ahead and take our head bolts out and take our cylinder head off. Go ahead and remove our head gasket here. And you can see I got a lot of rust accumulation inside there. That's what you get when you leave that engine out in the rain. Let's take a closer look at this head here. So what we're looking at right here are three combustion chambers for this particular cylinder head here. Each combustion chamber has four valves, two intake, and two exhaust. And each combustion chamber would also have a spark plug in the center of it. And I took the spark plugs out, so that's why you don't see spark plugs on this one. But that's actually what ignites the air-fuel mixture and causes the combustion process to take place, pushing the piston down, thus giving the uh, engine its power there. But these are the valves here. And you saw when I was rotating the camshafts earlier how the valves would open and close. These actually poke out just a little bit and allow either air to come into that combustion chamber or they poke out and allow exhaust gas to exit the combustion chamber. And I'll flip it over here and we'll go ahead and take one of those valves out so you can see what it looks like outside of the cylinder head there.
And that's what it looks like right there. That cam follower or rocker arm pushes down on this valve here. And it just kind of pushes it off of its seat just a little bit so that intake air can go through that little runner right there along with some fuel and allow it to be introduced into the combustion chamber like that. So constantly as the engine is running, that thing's doing this number right there. And of course your valve spring is what makes that valve return to a seated position there. So it's constantly being pushed down by the cam follower and then being pushed back up by the return spring and it just keeps repeating that motion there and that's how that works and the same thing goes on on your exhaust valves and the exhaust gas actually leaves goes out the back of the uh, the head there and then into the exhaust system and as you know as your engine is running this whole area up under here is going to be just obliterated with oil constantly so uh, in order to keep oil from getting down into the combustion chamber through the valve you have these valve seals on each of your valves there and that helps to keep the oil out of the combustion chamber well that is it folks for this video i'll post links down in the description below this video to the first part of this series and of course the other parts that are soon to come hopefully uh, that will be posted down there too you can just click on those and go watch those videos there guys i sincerely hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was a help to you please read that entire description down there for more very important information about this there may be some things i need to clarify that's where i do that and also please read the disclaimer at the very end of that description thanks again for watching guys please like and subscribe